Hey, welcome back to another video, human beings. How are you all doing? Hopefully, you're having a fantastic day. Today, we're going to be talking about a G Portal and how you can make a server on G Portal, how to install mods, uh, just basically how to just use the platform and the system and all that. I mean, this has been on my list for a very long time, so let's get into this. Wait, what? You want to use G Portal, but you don't want to pay full price? Well, check out this referral link. If you use that lovely referral link, 5% discount on your game servers. Yeah, that's right, 5%. So go check out the links down below. Gportal.com, E-N, reference equals beanie. Like I said, down below, you get 5% off your servers for life. Once you load up G Portal for the first time, you'll be greeted with a page something like this. You can sign up with your Google account or a local account, and you'll be greeted with stuff like this. It's got your popular games, your games, and this applies for any game this process that i'm going to show you but we're going to be talking about arc today so what you want to do is depending on your platform we'll play on pc you want to click on the arc uh, you can order your slots top seller as you can see is 10 slots you're going to go order now or you can go configure it. so order now will give you 10 slots for 30 days uh, if we go to configure i'm going to click on that and you can customize it a little bit so we're going to go for 10 slots that is 11 euros you can convert that into your own currency you can have a discount if you go for the year over just the 30 days so if you're going to be on there a while you can obviously pick your location mine is normally england and you can adjust this here obviously the higher the slots the more this is going to cost so for 30 days at 650 for a thousand slots because obviously it uses a lot of resources but i normally just keep it on 10 slots if you're not going to have a huge play play base you then go through to the register and the payment method once you've done that and you've brought it you can click on my servers now, I have a few servers here, so we're just going to go down to one that we're not using. So, you'll have something like this. It'll just be Arc Survivor 4 G Portal. And we're going to do is we're going to click on that, and it'll bring you to the edit page. And this is where you're going to edit everything. You can check the status. You can turn the server on and off. So, we're going to turn the server off for now. On this page, as clear as day, it's going to show your IP, how many people are on there, your CP, uh, the CPU load, the RAM load, and the access data if you want FTP. I'm going to reset this password after this video so don't don't try and connect to it okay basic settings tab down the side this is where you're going to basically configure the majority of your server you can also do this via the configure files tab uh, which will give you more of a back end uh, but i normally go basic settings first and do the rest in the configuration files click on basic settings you'll be taken to a page like this you can change the layout it's basically at the moment just one one setting per line you can have it like this so there's three settings per line or two settings per line i tend to use three settings per line just because it's a lot of a lot easier to get everything but the purpose of this video will do one at a time so we can work our way through it i'm just going to delete all saves and delete all characters that's going to take a while but there we go done all that so the first the very first thing that you want to decide when making a server is it going to be steam or for epic games obviously if you're on playstation then you know, it'll be for PlayStation, Xbox, it'll be for Xbox. Uh, G Portal doesn't support Xbox servers, I believe, so uh, you need to go to the Trado for that. Uh, but basically, you've got Steam, Epic Games, or you can have Steam and Epic Games. Now, if you have it cross play, just note you cannot have mods. If you have Epic Games, you cannot have mods. The only place you can store mods is Steam. So we're going to keep it as Steam because I play on Steam and whatever. So this is going to be the name of the server. We're going to name this one. It's sort of a spoiler to what's coming out. That's going to be the name of the server. And that's what you're going to find when you're searching for the server. Hardcore Genesis 2 Beanie. Okay. Number of slots. That's the one that you set. Uh, but you can, if you add in more slots, you can change the slot count. Choose the map that you want. This is all, this is, this bit's all very easy. We're just going to go straight down. We're doing Genesis part two. Total conversion, if you want to do primitive plus. The server password, obviously, we're not going to show that, but we'll do that later. The admin password, this will allow it for your admin so they can do uh, whatever they want. admin stuff, you know, kick people from the server and all that. Spectator password, if you want people to spectate. And then just your basic tip boxes. I'm not going to go through everything here because a lot of it is self-explanatory, but I mean, for the basic settings, do you want to, do you want battle eye active, which is like the anti-cheats? Uh, you want to anti-speed hack, you know, tick all this. Enable idle player kick. So after 2,400 seconds, a player will be kicked. You can fully customize that and change that. When people join, you can change the daily message. So subscribe to Beanie. Oh, that's a good time to tell you. Why don't you go and subscribe to Beanie? Also, we got 5K subscriber merch. Check that out in the link down below. It's a limited time merch when we hit 6,000 subs. It's over, bro. So go and check it out. You can set how long that message of the day is going to last. You can have exclusive joins. Now, this will be your Steam IDs. So your Steam ID is a general numbers. So if uh, it's long character. You can see this here. This is a Steam ID. So you can have this as an exclusive join and only people that you put Steam IDs in would be able to join this server. Same with admin access. If you only want certain people to have admin access, chuck this in and only people, people that chuck in here won't have to put in the admin password every time they want to do something admin. You've got ban list, whitelist, 
self-explanatory you can have server log gameplay login tribe login basically this will just fall out loads of files into the logs right over here so you can go through and just see uh, what's happening on the servers very useful last button on the basics is that you can force dino respawns uh, obviously all these have a little thing at the bottom you could just set that if you want to and that every time the server restarts you'll have a dino wipe pretty cool but uh i would recommend doing a daily up a daily wipe broadcast this could be a message that you display when the server's restarting so if you activate this you can give it 10 minutes and a message and then get to safety or whatever if you add that just a note so for example if you have your server to reset at 12 o'clock at night or midnight and uh, at 12 o'clock, it will take this, the broadcast will happen with 10 minutes, and that means that the server won't restart until 10 past 12. So uh, just note that if you add in this. I'll tell you, auto restarts we could do here in the restarts under administration. We'll get to that in a moment. Cross arc. So cross arc is basically being able to, uh, if you're doing a cluster series, you have multiple servers. What you're gonna do is you're gonna enable cross arc and you're gonna type in a unique, that unique character in all your servers and they'll be able to see each other and you'll be able to transfer between them. And this is all uh, travel settings. So you can prevent download, prevent download survivors, items, dinos, and you can prevent uploading items or dinos. Here you can mix with the expiration of players and creatures on the upload. So once you upload it to a terminal, uh, this is you can set here how many seconds until that player or creature disappears from the terminal if you have a lot of players this is good just to keep the back end free um, and gives people a little bit of a timer so they don't store everything in there no transfer from filters if you make it a public server i guarantee i definitely recommend that you do this tick cross arc even if there's no other servers in your cluster or whatever even if this is the only one tick cross arc and then tick no transfer from filtering as it says there, it blocks uploads and downloads from other servers. This includes single players. Now, the first time I ever hosted a server, uh, people found out about this and they were able to spawn stuff in single player and bring it to my server uh, because I didn't have this no transfer from filtering ticked. I recommend highly if you're having people join, you tick that, okay? You make sure that's ticked. You make sure cross arc is ticked and you just keep it like that. The next section is gameplay. Trust me, we are, we are so far... When there's so much left to do but the next section is gameplay here you can activate events if there's an event obviously you got surf day summon bash and all that you can set your difficulty 0 0.5 means level 150s i'm gonna turn this to 0 0.6 so one 180s and then you can override the difficulty right there you can set the per server to pve you can set it to server hardcore which i'm doing you could disable the genesis missions if you're on genesis you could use single player settings because it's slightly different um single player settings faster tame and breeded and more experience that's if you want but you can also customize all them yourself so i never tick it you can allow tribe rules cancel tribe rules pvp uh, pve timer and a bunch of pve settings you could enable pvp gamma or disable pve gamma i'm gonna take that because i'll be playing on my own so that's fine show floating damage you want to take that obviously or do if you don't but if you want the little green damage bubbles you want to take that allow hit markers again server crosshairs or self-explanatory this is the fun stuff this is where you can start changing experience so you can have an experience multiplier we're going to set that to two uh kill experience multiplier we'll set that to two and harvest we'll set that to two so basically you get two xp for everything craft and all that could stay as one at the moment and obviously you can customize these all the way up as you can see it says there higher equals better so the higher the number the better it really helps you out so this is why g portal is amazing and i recommend that you jump on g just to speed through all this you can disable hexagon stores uh you can set the hexagon rewards so uh, 0 0.1 i think is correct but we're gonna turn it to one i think one might be correct i'm not sure i think one's correct hexagon cost so you can change how much the hexagon stuff costs in the stores i mean there's a lot of customizability in owning a server and i recommend everyone jumps on a server the next section is world so you can uh, change a bunch of stuff here so harvest amount this is how much you're going to harvest i'm going to turn this to times five because it's hardcore it's going to be difficult enough as it is uh, you can clamp resource usage there's a bunch of options here but i generally just change harvest into five and i leave the rest crop growth multiplier see how much stuff you can do i'm going to turn this to five because i hate crop growth <laughs> and decay is going to stay one fishing is going to stay one i don't want to keep all this the same day and night speed so i keep it one uh, day cycle i keep it one you can disable fog if you want to um you can disable the mesh and stuff i don't normally play with any of this but you could do this disable loot crates if you want the next section is structures i told you we're going to be flying through this now because it's just i'm only going to talk about the ones that i really see important so you can allow structures 
at supply drop. So if someone builds under a supply drop, you can layer that or you can disable it. Again, playing on my own, I don't care. You can unload the integrated S plus structures if you want. Um, I am going to keep that on even though I will add, add S plus. Disable structure placement collision. Ticking that. This will allow you to basically put structures in floors or, you know, if two structures overlap. I mean, it's amazing. You can allow cave building. Bunch of structure delay settings right here if you want to stop your structures delaying on a PvP server. Um, it's, I mean, it's just little things. I don't normally mess with all this. You can destroy unconnected water bites. I don't mess with that either. Always allow structure pickup. I tick that on my PvE servers. Just go for it. I mean, it's amazing. Next section is character. And this is what's going to be happening to you if you want to mess with your stats. So if you want to do more player damage or you want to do more resistance, you could change that all here. I'm going to keep this all as vanilla because I'm doing a hardcore series. You can turn on corpse locator. I mean, actually, that doesn't really matter for me because it's hardcore. I'll be dead. <laughs> uh, show map for your player map. You can allow third person here. You can allow tech suit powers in Genesis. You can prevent diseases. You can prevent non-permanent diseases. You can auto unlock all engrams. This is a good one. So uh, every time you level up, it basically unlocks all engrams. But note though that when you use this, all your tech engrams will be unlocked by default. So you can't get up to a level. Anything like that's level locked, you will have to level to that bit to unlock the engrams. But because the tech engrams you get from bosses, it will be uh, instantly unlocked. I'm going to allow that because it's hardcore and I can't bother to keep doing it. You can change the max tribes, so max alliances per tribes and the max tribes per alliance. You can change all that. The next section is dino. You can change taming speeds. We're going to do five and five. That's for taming speeds on normal creatures. This is for passive taming. Uh, if you want mating interval, so um, it's going to be hardcore and it's going to be my own personal server. So I'm putting that to zero. That means there's no waiting time in between mating. And then your egg hatch speed, turn that to a 100. Baby mature speed. Uh, I'm pretty sure we could turn that to 100 as well. That makes your babies grow really fast. Uh, baby food con consumption, you keep that as one. Hopefully you have a trough. Uh, cover, baby cuddle interval. Now I believe this is linked to how fast you have them mature. Uh, if I remember correctly, cuddle interval, you want it to cuddle interval more. So if we turn it to 10 and then baby imprint amount. So baby cuddle multiplier is connected to mature speed. So basically divide it by... Uh, 100 so oh, that, that doesn't make sense divide it by a thousand does that mean basically it's got to be 0 0.1 <laughs> that's that's what you're looking at right there you got if you've got that 100 that's got to be 0 0.1 sort of makes it work out um baby imprint amount you can set how much your imprints will do i'm gonna do that to three might not work i need i need to play with it but that's generally what i use if you want your babies to scale more you can turn that up i used to have that on three but we're going to leave it on one you can allow anybody to imprint on your babies you can disable buffs you can disable mate boosts if you want to you can turn up the poop poop default if you wanted dino count multiplier this tricks a lot of people and i recommend that you uh, set this to one uh, basically what this does it's it's there to basically save uh, like server usage so it doesn't lag as much i've noticed with that though it, it defaults to 0 0.8 we've had creatures not spawn on pacific maps uh, so island we didn't have some of the alphas spawning scorched we didn't have rexes spawning aberration i think it was it was something it was something that was a main creature that we needed to get but um they weren't spawning i think it might have been reapers i think they weren't spawning something like that um uh, so yeah this this dino count multiplier needs to be one if you want to get all your creatures to spawn. It's just, I don't know why it's there, to be honest. It just breaks stuff. Chat, you can turn it global chat. You can have voice chat. I mean, all this stuff right here. Admin login for the chat. Or always notify players joining or leaving. And that's pretty much from the basic settings. Now, there's quite a lot there, but I mean, and, and we talked about that a lot, but that's the basic settings. The next one that you want to look at is the configuration files. No, I didn't click save on that like an idiot. Always click save. Uh, the configuration files, uh, you might be used to this if you customize your own servers. The two that you really want to focus on is the game.ini and the game user settings.ini. So if you go to game.ini and it gives you like a text file where you can do false, true or false. A lot of the same things that you're in here are in the basic settings tab, but you have a little bit more control and you can add and remove um, things from here. So, I mean, most of that is pretty much exactly the same, but the game user settings, this is where you can add configurations for mods so for example there's the, all these i mean go through all these at your own world there's a few things i'd say add in but if you wanted to add some for structures plus you'll do something like this structures measure it spelled like that and then you could add structure plus settings so for example you could have the pestle and mortar 
speed times 10. Um, I'll give you a proper example of that in a moment. Your logs tab, after you've ticked all your logs and all that, this is obviously where you're going to be able to see them. You're going to be able to see tribe logs, um, other logs, and you can watch this in real time. If you've got auto scroll on, you can watch this in real time, which is pretty cool. Console, you can chuck in some commands straight from here without having to log into the game. So you can click uh, players from here. You can ban players, unban players, destroy world owners, save world, um, pretty much list players. You can do all them from this console. So, which is pretty cool. Engine settings, you can change these all in the configuration files tab, but I mean, if you wanted just to see it and change it, you can change specific stat multipliers right here. These are vanilla multiplier stats at the moment. I normally keep them the same. Oh, now the bit that you all want, the mods tab. So the mods tab, uh, basically once you've done the basic settings and configuration files, you want to run the game. So you want to turn it on, let it download all the files for that map that you've chose. Once it's come online, you're going to turn it off again. So you turn it off there and then add your mods. So that way you've built your map before adding the mods. Adding mods on G-Portal is amazingly simple. We're just going to go search for the mod that you want. So structures, it should pick up structures plus. Typically it doesn't. Structures plus. There we go. S plus. We're going to install that. And look, it just pops here. You click active. It's done. When you next reboot your server, as you can see, change is made. You need to restart your server. Next time you add your server or you start your server, it will add that map. And all the mods are here that are on uh, the Steam Workshop. So you could just search for anything like Primal Fear. If you wanted the Primal Fear mods, here's all the Primal Fear mods that you can just install. Super easy to install mods. Like I said, if you ever want to change mod settings, uh, you will, I'll show you them in a sec. Auto update. So every time the server restarts, it will do an auto check for update. Restarts is what I talked about earlier. You could do a daily restart, for example, at... Uh, 10 15 and this is you can put a description just to let you know daily restart and you click save now that will restart the server every day at 12 but if you have the notification message on to basically tell people that the server's restarting in 10 minutes it will actually restart at 12 10 okay so that's just for you to know backups you have to manually create backups on uh, g portal so when the server's off create a backup and it will run through the process it takes about 10 15 minutes and you'll have a nice little backup here that you can restore from uh, best practice is to man to manually do this you can only do it manually but manually do this every week just manually do this every week get into the habit of every once a week clicking create backup when the server's off do this daily restart or if you just have a scheduled restart because uh, i've had it a few times where a server's broke and i haven't actually had any backups so uh, yeah don't do that. finally permissions if you have friends or other people that you want to help run the server you can basically add their username their g portal username into here and uh, you can they can use everything on this list. Be careful though, because they have full access to everything. There's no way to change what they have access to. They have access to the whole server. That's pretty much everything from G Portal for making a server. I do want to show you the settings of one that has been fully set up. So this is Ark of the Complete Saga. This is obviously the last time we've done it was on the Extinction. And I just want to show you, first of all, the mods. These are the mods that we had on here. And if you go to configure files, I just want to show you some of the settings here. So we're going to go to the game user settings .ini. Scroll down to where I've got my mod settings because I just wanted to show this. So we've got structures plus. So we've got disable unlock map specific engrams equals true. So you couldn't get engrams some other maps on the map that you're on. If you do want that, you can just leave that to um, false or not add it at all. Grinder resources equals 100. So that's how much resources you'll get from the minimum return and the max return is 300 so you can get up to 300 percent more resources i mean it's amazing allow intake place water from anywhere this is a good one so if you don't want to build next to water and you just want water intake anywhere the s plus pipes will work from anywhere so you don't need a water source so i leave that as true no foundation is true personal mortar crafting speed compost bin slot counts s plus is like infinitely like just you can come yeah, you can just change so many settings in S+. We've got these are the custom level dino mod settings. This is the death recovery dino settings. And all these are just, you just add them here. You can also change your message of a day here. Uh, you can change your server here. You can change your passwords. It's all here. And I would highly recommend you just playing through this side and experiencing both the text file, the .ini file, and doing it from like, you know, toggles and all that. But you could definitely do more in these files than you can in anything else as you can see here in the game.ini i've overwritten the levels that you get so the amount of points that you get per level so you can unlock more engrams and then it also increased the max level which is very cool that's pretty much it then that's um, how you make a g portal server in full depth how to install mods a quick overlook over the main settings that you'll need if you want more in-depth settings i can definitely do that 
But uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure to like button, subscribe to become a human being, and I'll see you in the next one on Fantastic Day. Oh, bye.